Folks, man, this is Monk, and we are back with another episode of From the Canopy Film Show. And this is the show that reviews the most movies more than any other show, man. So go ahead and subscribe, turn on notifications, and be alerted when we got new episodes. I'm joined as always with my co host, we got Bobby Blockbuster. Yo, yo, yo. And we got Cornelius, aka Evil Corny. Yo, yo, yo. <laughs> hey, folks, <laughs> man. So. <laughs> <laughs> we normally do um, news and trailers, but we've got a lot of uh, films to cover this episode, so we're just going to get right into that. And let me see, what are we going to start with, man? I'm going to start with, you know what? Let's start with a uh, like, little bit light, man. So I'm going to start with Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. This is a Netflix exclusive, and this is coming out of the deal that they had um, with Nickelodeon. So um, this is based on the, the, the newer version of the animated show. Um, I think that started in 2018. So this is the Rise of the Ninja Turtles, Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the movie. So the turtles are put to the test when a mysterious stranger named Casey Jones arrives from the future to warn the mutant brothers of an impending invasion of the most dangerous alien force in the galaxy, the crane. And uh, we got some, um, actually some pretty cool voice talent here. We got Ben Schwartz. I think he's from uh, House of Lies, Cat Graham, Josh Brenner. Um, Brandon, um, Mike Kyle, Kelly Joel Osment is Casey Jones. <laughs> yeah, he ain't uh, seen dead people no more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we got uh, Eric Bowser playing um, Splinter, Riz Darby, Omar Benson. You might know him from Eight Mile, Ten Freaky Girls. Uh, <laughs> I don't even know his name from the movie. I just, I just know him as Ten Freaky Girls. <laughs> oh, you know, and it's crazy because his other dude from Eight Mile. Who played the manager is on here too, Eugene Bird. Oh, yeah. Uh, long story short, man, I, this was entertaining, man. I what? haven't seen the new iteration of the show. I know they made some changes that everyone's not happy with, um, including what I actually do appreciate is giving each of the turtles like different physical attributes. Like, yes. like they all seem to be different species of turtles. Um, but there's there's some other changes too. It seems like uh, Raphael is the leader this time out, mm-hmm. and Leonardo is kind of the the aloof one, you know what I'm saying? And Michelangelo, um, it's crazy. He's kind of like a mystic. He doesn't smoke himself uh, conscious. Yeah. Um, <laughs> He's all the way woke, man. Yeah. <laughs> wow. yeah. Doing like spells and, and yoga. Like, it's crazy. Hey, put the nunchucks down. He's like, mm. yeah. <laughs> wow. That's some cool stuff, man. Mm-hmm. Um, as well as, um, well, Donatello's still the gadget, man. But I had a good time with it, man. They know it's a simple story. It's uh, pretty short, too. I think it's coming in about, like, 80 minutes or something like that. Um, the story's, um, you know, pretty much fast-paced. Um, but it does have some moments that kind of hit you, you know, a little bit. It does yeah. have this, the spirit of the Ninja Turtles. is still intact despite the changes, you know, the themes of brotherly love and all of them coming together and uh, working as a team, you know, to, to triumph in the end. And um yeah, I had a good time with it. I could recommend checking it out if you're a turtle fan. Yeah, it's definitely it's uh it's 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 your basic good versus evil, uh feel good cartoon. It is uh targeted for you know the younger crowd. So if you go in there as as a as a adult that loves the franchise, expecting some kind of you know reiteration of what we got in the comic books or from the nineties films or and things of that nature lower that bar this is this is definitely um like i was telling core uh, after i watched it um the humor was very similar to me as what we would get from like teen titans go you know what i mean mm-hmm. but that doesn't take nothing away from this film um the animation is still very good uh, it's colorful it's vibrant um and one thing that stood out to me is it brings a lot of um new looks and diversity into the characters from that's very different from what we saw from the 90s cartoon you know what i'm saying and like right out the gate like you'll see like you said all the turtles look different i mean raf is swole he looks like he's like a seven footer and only thing missing is a football jersey he needs to be playing linebacker not being a ninja you know what i mean and um 
you know, uh, but there was one thing that, that kind of like, uh, I just, I didn't like the look of master splinter. Um, he, he, he didn't really look, he didn't really come off like, like a, uh, like a ninja like rat. A guinea pig. He looked like, yeah. Or, or like Heathcliff <laughs> or something. And he seemed to love pizza more than the turtles. Like, I mean, my man had a little pizza pie on his, on his little kimono or whatever he was wearing. Um, and he just, he seemed a little, um, a little less wise. Like, like he was kind of almost, uh, in the shadow of, you know, what the turtles like. I'm like, well, how did you teach them to be, you know? You know what, though? I kind of appreciate that. He's more like a real dad. Like, he, he, like, he did the hard part. He raised you. He just, <laughs> just doesn't have that, yeah. that in-depth uh, mysticism <laughs> as, as the old spinner, nah. you know? He's, yeah. he's a little goofy. Yeah, he's a he's, he's, yeah, he's, like he's, that, yeah. dude. They're, they're um, playing around with his character. I, I like that. <laughs> and and also, what we get out of uh, the Krangs. Like, um, I was used to, you know, Krang being, like, you know, the brain, you know, the, that big machine thing stuffs them in the stomach, and it was just one. In this one, um, it's more than one. Uh, it's almost like a, a like a, a bunch of siblings. You get a, a couple brothers and a sister, um, which that's cool. I understand that, but the look of them just was a little offbeat to me. Uh, they they didn't really come off as brains, even though they were. They almost kind of had like a, a more of like a, a spider element to them. But outside of that, I mean. You can go through this with a fine tooth comb if you really want to nitpick through this, you know, children's cartoon. We're not going to do that. All in all, it was fun. It was a fun watch, and I think that it was a it was a, it was a good move for Netflix to to obtain this property and deliver it the way that they did. Because um, one thing that I also uh, found out after watching this film is apparently the the cartoon series that this was based off came to an end and they did some things with the storyline to, you know, where whatever character development was happening in the series, they kind of dumbed that down a little bit. So someone could go into this movie completely green and still, you know, get maximum entertainment out of it. And for that, it worked for me because I have not seen a single episode of this actual series. And, you know, I stepped away from this film and I was entertained. And I was I was proud of the end product that they delivered. Um, I think Corey's seen this film also. We didn't talk about it last week, but um, I watched the film Vengeance um, uh, this week. And what it is, it's um, a podcaster slash writer um, travels from New York um, to kind of solve the murder of this girl that he had hooked up with. It stars B.J. Novak, um, Hope, Hope, Boyd Holbrook, um, Cameron, Dove Cameron, uh, Issa Rae, Ashton Kutcher. I did not recognize Ashton Kutcher when I first saw this film. It's a very good film. B.J. Novak uh, wrote and directed it. Um, but pretty much it's a bit of a murder mystery in a small Texas town. Um, like I said, that um, the podcaster gets, you know, gets a um, call from family of the um, murdered girl. And even though he didn't really remember her that well, he goes and starts investigating. He starts podcasting about it. And um, it's the co- podcast was pretty good. Like, um, cause he's a racist, like his um, producer and everything, but um, everybody was loving it and every, you know, everything that was happening in it. But um it remind me of a film I've seen before, but I couldn't re- can't really put my finger on it. But overall, it was a good murder mystery. Yeah, yeah, we ran out of time last week, um, but um, yeah, I really enjoyed it, man. I went in blind, and um, I think uh, I was I listened to someone, or I didn't listen to the review, but I saw like the the, the intro that they wrote on it, and they said it was uh, surprisingly really funny. And yeah, this thing was hilarious, man, because because one of the themes is like. The woman who's murdered they're investigating for some reason for him it was just a quick fling or one thing but for her it seems like she was really into this guy and the family yeah, yeah. thought that they was really tight so that's why they invite him to the funeral and like there's a crazy scene where he's like giving like a eulogy <laughs> he's just winging it and, like this thing is really funny plus the whole I- idea of him being this uh jewish guy from new york that's stuck with this hardcore texas uh you know Family, yeah. kind of, um, you know, guns and, and right wing, you know, family. And, and there's the kind of that clash of, of, you know, cultures, man. But it's really funny, man. Really entertaining. I like the cast in this. Um, really great performances. And it goes by pretty quick, man. I don't think the mystery is terribly involved or anything. But 
but you have a fun time getting from beginning to the end, you know. And I haven't seen Ashley Kutcher in a film in a long time since, mm-hmm. like, um, guess who I think with Bernie Mac and um, who's his girlfriend in that? I can't remember, but I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, I remember. Since he was that Bernie Mac movie, that's the last time I, I remember seeing yeah. him in a film, and it was real, real nice seeing him and you know actually acting again. Yeah, so. yeah, it was a great film. Man. I definitely recommend it. Um, I had to go to the. Uh, Rockville to see this one, man. So I had to hop on the train, mm. get over there to the town center yeah, with the parking seats, man. Yeah. It was worth the trip, man. I wasn't mad at all. There we go. There we go. Yeah, I'm gonna have to check that one out. Um, so yeah, so I guess the first film that I'll bring up is also brought to us by Netflix, and it's called, a film called Carter. And <clears throat> pretty much, uh, it follows this man Carter who awakens two months into a deadly pandemic originating from the DMZ that has already devastated the U.S. and North Korea. Um, he, he who has no recollection, recollections of his past finds a mysterious device in his head and a lethal bomb in his mouth, a voice in his ears that gives him orders to avoid getting killed, and he's thrown into a mysterious operation while the CIA and the North Korean coup chase him closely. <laughs> hey, catch my breath. <laughs> you know what's wild though? None of that even matters when you None of it does. <laughs> None of it does. What matters is this. The one thing they don't tell you in the synopsis is that this film should come with a seatbelt. Okay? Because yes. <laughs> it is high octane. <laughs> it is action packed, fast paced. It is an adrenaline rush. You watch this thing. If you were feeling slow and sluggish before you hit play, you will not after the credits start rolling. I mean, this this whole thing, it is just, I mean, by the time we're seven minutes in, we are knee deep in the action. By the time we're 30 minutes. It's like 20, first 20 minutes, there's probably like 25 people dead. That's what I was about to say. Yeah, about 30 <laughs> minutes in, the body count is over 35. I count it. And... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there is so much like hand-to-hand combat, the the weapon usage, the gadgets, the gunplay, everything. This this film is choreographed beautifully, and the cinematography is amazing. It's like like it, it, I don't know if they they took a a a, a piece out of my man um, uh, that directed oh, Ambulance, yeah, Michael Bay, Michael Bay, that- with the, yeah, with the, the 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 drone usage. But I mean, it seems like the the camera is constantly spinning at a sixty degree um, angle, and we are seeing all sides of what's going on. I mean, my man, like I don't even know how he had time to breathe while acting this. I mean, there is like there's moments, like you said, with that drone camera, where like it's Michael Bay. He had a couple flybys and mm-hmm. all that. But in this one, dude, they're actually using that drone in between the fighting scenes. Yes. The drone feels like a steady cam operator. Yes. That, it's crazy how they've done this. A lot of um, a lot of CGI it doesn't always look the best, but I applaud them for just making the effort to make something so exactly over the top and ridiculous, man. Like, like, like I haven't seen action this good in a long time, man. And it's, it's crazy. They find <laughs> a way to make it make sense. Like this is not one, it's not gonna blow you away with the story. The story, um, it, it's simple, it's easy to follow. And if you have to step away, you to use the bathroom or something, you're you're gonna be able to come right back and, and, and not miss much of the plot or the premise. The only thing that you're gonna wanna hit rewind for is how many more people got in the fight, how many more <laughs> motorcycles might have got crashed and who got jump kicked in the face? Or you might have to rewind, like, did that really just happen? Did that like, really did just that happen? Really I mean, just... and and this one, no, dude, man. about an hour in, there is one of the coolest car chase scenes. There's a lot of motorcycles. There's a lot of, of just high speed. And, and there's like two vans and a lot of bodies flying, some gun usage. I mean, this, this film <clears throat> is everything that you want out of an action film. If, if it's like... I mean, I don't want to compare this, but if uh, if you've seen that movie Crank with Statham, this is like that in essence, but so much better, so much more involved. You know what I mean? But the pacing feels the same as where it's like you, you feel like you don't have time to breathe while you're watching this because there's just so much going on visually. Or um, what was that? What was that other film? Um Hardcore Henry. Okay, I mean, that was those are two. When I saw the trailer, those are two films that I would have 
Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, this one definitely it, it, it hit on that hardcore Henry a little more than Crank. I think Crank more like with the subject matter, but hardcore Henry with the visuals. But I mean, all in all, I was thoroughly impressed. I mean, this is this film is I want to say is clocking in at about uh two hours and twelve minutes. It feels like maybe like a, a half an hour, 45 minute ride. I mean, it just moves that fast. And, um, you know, I, like I said, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I'm, this one is definitely going to get multiple viewings from me just because of the craziness and, and, and everything that's being and delivered. Got zombies, huh? zombies. I mean, it has <laughs> everything, dog. Like everything. It is just, it is just so off the wall, insane. And, I mean, to anyone who who follows this director, uh, what's his name? My man, um, Jung Bang, Jung Bang Gil. He's the dude who wrote and directed Villainous, and that okay, movie okay. Is, is also equally awesome. Starts off the same. I mean, you're ten minutes into that movie, and the body count's already over a million too. High high octane, just just a lot of action packed hand to hand combat and everything going on. This one is is. It's hitting the same way, man. Just, uh, man, I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. And I, you know, like I said, it's going to get multiple viewings out of me. I guess I'm going to talk about this um, documentary I saw today. Um, it's pretty short, too. It just appeared on HBO Max and it's called uh, Milestone Generations. And it's the story of Milestone Comics, man. So it's the story of four black creators who changed the face of storytelling, the forces that drove them apart and brought them back together, and the effect their work continues to have today. And um, this was entertaining, man. Pretty um, it's only about an hour long. Um, it's um, narrated by Method Man. Um, I guess the, the big players in here will be uh, Dennis Cowan and um, Dwayne McDuffie, rest in peace. And they started, you know, the mom, um, you know, back in the day. I think uh, DC published it for them. But um, you know, characters like Icon, Static Shock, Hardware, and it tells a story. You know their rise, and and you know it's sort of the fall. And they actually got relaunched. I think a couple of years ago, the books did. That's and cool. I think there actually is a Static Shock um, show in the works. Uh, hopefully, that wasn't going to HBO Max. Um, who knows what's going to happen? Right. Still Warner Brothers, though. Yeah, it's still Warner Brothers. There was, a, there was a cartoon before Static yeah, Shock. Yeah, cartoon Static before. Shock cartoon. Yeah. Okay, I remember that. Yeah, so it tells the story there, man. It's done pretty well. And it's only about an hour long, so I mean, I guess there's more you can dig up on these guys if you, you know, wanted to, you know, read something. But I think it does a good job in the hour that we have with it to tell, you know, a lot of the story and a lot of what happened. And it's cool to see the guys now, their older selves, you know, talking about, you know, working with DC, you know, during that time period. Mm -hmm. And I think, yeah, I think um, they're probably just going to start, hopefully, develop more of those properties. I know the Static Shock thing is in the works, but hopefully we'll see them do some more with, you know, some of that stuff, the milestone era. So Bullet Train, that was crazy, man. Let me bring up the uh, synopsis real quick. So um, in this film, um, Ladybug is an unlucky assassin who's determined to do his job peacefully after one too many gigs has gone off the rails. Fate, however, may have other plans as his latest mission puts him on a collision course with lethal adversaries from around the globe, all with connected yet conflicting objectives on the world's fastest train. Fastest train is direct directed by... Of David Leitch, uh, starring Brad Pitt. We got Bad Bunny. We got Joey King. We got Aaron Taylor Johnson. Oh, David Leitch is actually in this himself. Um, Karen uh, Fukuhara, um, Logan Lerman, uh, Brian Tyree Henry, um, Hiroyuki, um, Sonata, Zazie Beats. Um, it's a lot of people here, man. You know, some of the people I'm going to leave off because they're kind of surprises. You know, I want you to have some. You know stuff to look forward to you when you check this out but this is a really great um fun film man it's crazy because the premise is pretty wild it reminds me of um maybe what was that thing they had uh back in the day with all the assassins uh, i keep forgetting the name is it lucky slug and aces smoking aces the story's pretty simple but 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 i think what makes it stand apart is a comedy in it man mm -hmm. like there is some really great humor and just great characters man what i appreciate about this it doesn't have as many a deep like the assassins aren't as as numerous as they were in um, Smoking Aces, so you kind of get some time with them, man, and you get to know them, and and which is great because it gives the actors time to really do their thing and bring these characters to life and just have really fun with this, man. Even you know Brad Pitt's cool, but but it's weird because you know a lot of the other characters, you know at least the um, 
like Ryan Tyree Henry's character and this other guy. They got British accents, yeah. you know, but 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 they're from all over the world in a way, you know, a lot of them, you know, Bad Bunny's character is thrown in the mix, but just to see it all unravel and unfold, man, it's a really great, entertaining, high energy, like well done, you know, um, film, man. I had a lot of fun with this. Yeah, without spoiling anything, um, Brad Pitt was like the main character in it, but he had less of a backstory than anybody else. He had, mm-hmm. might have had like one or two interactions with the people in the past, but them just uh, going back to the backstories about um, like the twins, uh, Tangerine and Lemon, mm-hmm. that was a trip, you know. <laughs> um, the prince, um, <laughs> it might be a spoiler having to deal with that character, but you don't really know what she's all about, you know. She's mm-hmm. just on the train, but it, it's so much stuff that happens in this film. This is a real fun film, too. Um, it, it's just one of those to where when I started it, everything happened a little bit quicker than I thought it would, you know, in the film, because it's, it's it's action all the way through. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> you know what's crazy, man? That that recase that they show in this trailer. Now I see an ad on my um, Facebook feed to, to buy that briefcase from the movie. Really? <laughs> yeah. You know how much that briefcase costs? How much? Seventeen hundred dollars. <laughs> mm. Must be must be briefcasing some important yeah. documents. They know that I watched the movie. <laughs> they know I watched the movie, but they don't know that I can't afford that. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. right. Yeah, but it's cool, man. I would definitely encourage you. Uh, My thing about Brad Pitt, I, I think that um, he's always in the good. I, I can't think of too many bad Brad Pitt films, like all fan, mm-hmm. but. Even like like in Lost City, when he just did that bit of a cameo, he, he always is like he shows up in a movie. But I also saw this film they slash them. Um, I didn't enjoy this film in any way. Uh, I, I would actually have preferred to get my hour and thirty minutes back. Uh, I right. feel like it was poor, it was poorly written, poorly directed, poorly acted, poorly executed. Um, it just it did it did nothing for me um, in any way, shape, or form. Uh, that's that's pretty much uh, the, the, the all I can say about it. Like I, I you couldn't pay me to watch it again. <laughs> okay, okay. On this story, it's um, it's like Kevin Bacon's the main star, might be the biggest star in it. Uh, but it's uh, LG, um, LGBTQ conversion camp that he's running, and a killer shows up in it. I. I think it should have been a, a way more interesting film, but it, it, it just felt, everything about it just felt flat. Um, it, it wasn't really interesting at all. I talked to my sister about it, because me and her, you know, she wanted to see it just because she saw the previews and everything, and she enjoyed mm-hmm. the slasher too, but she was like, after the first couple of minutes, she knew exactly who the killer was, so it wasn't that big of a deal. The killer's yep. motive, <laughs> you know, you pretty much need to kill his motives and everything, but I, I, I don't know. It was just, it was just a bland film. You know, it, it wasn't anything that really spectacular happened in it. And there was nothing that stood out. And yeah, I guess I should have gave the synopsis too. I was just, I was just trying to get yeah, through it quick. Yeah. yeah, I watched it. I watched it with my, uh, with my daughter, and we both just after the credits started rolling, I was like, man, this was just, it was just, just bad on on many levels. And like you say, it was just so predictable, uh, so. And then it, it was and like it, drinking flat soda. No yeah, and it, it really didn't know what it wanted to be. Like, yeah, there was no I direction. Like, been, I mean, it, yeah, I, I kind of think it should have been way more humor in it, and that probably yeah. had you interested in it. But mm-hmm. it didn't really know if it wanted to be like a complete slasher or something a bit satire. And so yes, if it, and it was, a, it, it had a little bit of more satire in it. It probably would have done way better, but. Yes, and I'm. I'm. I'm gonna take this quotable from 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 my daughter. She looked at me. She said, "Man, how is this a slasher film if no one's really getting slashed?" Yeah, I was like, "Well, I I don't know." <laughs> so, yeah. 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 <laughs> Some sometimes you throw it to the wall and it doesn't stick, and this one just one stick. Yeah, it, yeah, it, yeah. It pretty much fell flat. Well, shoot, I guess let's go to the, um... <laughs> yeah, let's pick up the energy now. <laughs> to the, to the big one. Um, this is the, the, the biggest buzz of any film out there right now. It's the number one on Hulu, Hulu's biggest film ever, um, original that they've ever put out. And, Forrest um... Gump. It's gonna, it's gonna ah. be... 
a film called Prey. And in this film, a skilled Comanche warrior protects her tribe from a highly involved alien predator that hunts humans for sport, fighting against wilderness, dangerous colonizers, and this mysterious creature to keep her people safe. And this stars um, Amber Mid Thunder, um, Dane Deligero, Ray, Ray Str- Strachan. I, he's the was only he person. The he, no, no, the predator was played by a uh, uh, Dane Deligero. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I don't know who uh, who Ray is. I was yeah. I was trying to figure. <laughs> out. I was like, I don't where know do you who, fit in, Ray? I don't know who you are, Ray. It's also got <laughs> Stephanie Matthews, uh, Dakota Beavers, uh, Michelle Thrush. Of Julian Black Antelope, um, Troy Mundle, mm-hmm. Stormy Kip, um, Nelson Lice, and Bennett Taylor. And uh, it's a great dude. I mean, yeah. it is, I guess this will be officially the um, the fifth um, of the main Predator films. And I think they did a good job, man. Overall, man, like, um, I just like the approach to the story. This yeah. takes place, um, I guess, 300 years before the original film um, took place. So, so it's, it's putting us in a in a land that's, I mean, it's America. This is frontier kind of, you know, America, um, you know, so you see, I thought it was cool to include these uh, French fur trappers to show that, you know, they're encroaching and expanding yes. out west, you know, into the Comanche territory. Yes. And um, and this is where this particular uh, predator alien uh, decides to go on his hunt, because that's what they do if you don't know anything about predator films. These aliens come from space. They're like big game hunters. And they've chosen... Um, this area to engage in the hunt. And it's also interesting because this is, according to the story, this is supposed to be one of the first um, um, the evolved, first. Um, evolved predators to come, you know. This is his first hunt on Earth. Earth. Yeah, yeah. To come to Earth. So so, so it's kind of cool to see that this predator is, is a bit different in, in a lot of ways from the um, 87 predator, uh, which is different from other predators that we get in, you know, other films in the series. So I think that's cool to play on the fact that they're constantly evolving and changing, um, as well as changing the settings that they do in, engage in their hunt. And um, I had a good time with this, man. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, I mean, first things first, um, I appreciate the fact that this film, it resurrected and reinjected a dying franchise. It brought it back to life. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. After the last Predator film, um, those of us that are the biggest fans of this franchise even started still to lose faith. You know what I'm saying? And this this one, it, it brought it back in uh, with with good taste and, and grand fashion, man. And, um, you know, I think it was a very cool move to make our lead a female. I think that, you know, with them doing that, it just it, it brought something just completely different to the table, which um, I really appreciated, man. And and it, it, it helped really. um emphasize this underdog element that like that she was you know carrying with her not just with you know her battle against you know the predator but i mean she you know with within her tribe like nobody wanted to give her you know the opportunity to become a hunter like they kind of already had her course path set out for her and you know like what she had to do to maneuver through trying to um establish herself as a hunter was very entertaining in this film as well um even though there was a lot of cgs the special effects they worked for me dude they worked for me uh, you know all the way across the board um i think they, they were quality uh quality cgs and i really i love what we got from the from the predator as a whole like i love the look of them like just it, it seemed um, way more primal. Like it, it really it fit into you know this the 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 setting that that they, in the time that they were giving us with this film, and I and I love the atmosphere, dude. Like just the, the world the, that that was was going on at that time. It was just so so plush, so vibrant, so alive, you know, so untampered. You know what I mean? And they really did a great job and you know, accentuating that in, in many, many ways. I just, yeah, it was, the film was very um, aesthetically and visually pleasing on top of all of the other elements that it brought. Yeah, I really like this film. Um, um, Mid Thunder, I kind of want to see her in more films. Mm-hmm. Um, it's good to start off as a, a action star. Um, the Predator, I really thought this Predator was cool because it looked like he had the Skull was wearing the skull of another predator, you know. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I really thought that was cool. And it's kind of showing that it, his tech wasn't what it is when we see him um, going up against Arnold. Um, 
even though I I get just wondering if like he just had like somewhat guns or whatever. Everything seemed like it was almost um, somewhat matched to what a Native American or uh, a human at that point in time would have. Um, yeah. You know, they, they still have space travel, but, you know, I think they would still have a gun somewhere or a bomb somewhere if they were able to, uh, if they were cap capable of space travel. Um, his running with the hunters that happens in this film was amazing. I... I don't know. It, I, I'm glad that it wasn't just a straight, you know, personal, you know, um, person versus predator. You know, as she, when she went through a lot of uh, obstacles instead of it just being like a, you know, a straight story. And I, I, I kind of, I know what's going on with this about like um, Disney pretty much stopped Warner Brothers from or or H, uh, this going to HBO um, Max or whatever. But I would, I kind of hate that I wouldn't even see this in, in the theater, you know. And my, my basement's pretty good set up, but I I would have really loved to see this in the theater, you know. I, I had a I, I had a lot of fun with this film, you know. I'm with you on that. I would have loved to see this one on the big screen too. And just to your point, the that mask, I thought it was so when he was masked up, he kind of almost like to me, almost looked like uh, it was like essence of like the Wendigo or something like where you know oh, okay. where, where you like kind of flares out, which also kind of pays homage to you know Native American yeah. culture and, and story and lore. Yeah. Anyway, I thought that was just like it's like wow, if you if you really were reading between the lines, that was that was really cool for them to do that in that in that kind of way. I really really appreciated that. One thing that I'm kind of worried about is like. Since it went directly to Hulu, I hope we actually have a physical copy of this somewhere. Because yeah. you know, most right. of the time, you, yeah. Yeah, most of the time when you have stuff like this that's screaming, screaming, you rarely ever have like physical. You know, they sell physical copies of. But I would want to own this, and hopefully, they have some best of. I mean, not best of. Um, Behind the scenes type stuff going with yeah, it. some deleted scenes, possibly yeah, an alternate yeah. ending. I mean, it still has to end in in similar fashion. But yeah, man, I want I want those extras, man. <laughs> that bonus content, yeah, I need that. <laughs> yeah, they do have a few featurettes available um, on some of the stuff, but I don't think they've put out like a really big in depth um, drop yet. But um, also, um, I do want to tell people there is a um, post credit scene on this too, so mm -hmm. if you do check it out. You know, you can watch that. Um, but also, I don't know, man. I was speaking on the design, though. I did like, you know, at least the armor and the gear and all that. But that face was a little bit wild to me, dude. It yeah. was such a <laughs> big deviation yeah. from what we've got in, in the previous films, man. But but I, I see what they're trying to do. I mean, they do have different, you know, sort of like um, it's like different races yeah. within that species, you know. You know, if we look into the lore of all, so, so it makes sense that we can see something like, like a human, that. like you looking at somebody looking at me, you and Bob, even though we're the same type of thing, you know, we're different looking. So, yeah, humans, you look different, yeah. And um, yeah. actually, I did I did a little bit of looking into that. This one was supposed to be the version of what they call the feral predator, okay. So, I don't know what, what species that is, but like when I watched this, I watched this thing on YouTube and they they broke down like eight or nine different species. So I think that's kind of like tapping more into the, the, the comic book or uh, or something like that. But yeah, this one was supposed to be the feral, uh, feral predator, which actually is the predator that is uh, like uh, body wise, a little less armored, a little more, you know, primal in nature. Little, you know, what's interesting about this predator, like it was rushing head on into everything, man. Yeah, like, like, yeah, even, yeah. Like, like, you know, um, you know, without spoiling anything, like from the moment it sets foot on the planet it, it feels like it's it hasn't been there before it's trying out everything. everything like like you know goes after the rattlesnake goes after the, the, the puma goes after the bear you know goes after the people so it's trying to find the, the big him and that family. bear him and that bear was amazing i, I kind of was that really, one, one on a little bit longer one of my favorite scenes dude i love when he, the, the lion scene i love the bear scene and i also love the fact that before he pulls out that that little like wrist knife He's throwing a right hook first, too. <laughs> watching before he starts throwing the sword. I thought that was dope. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's interesting, man, what they're doing with it. Um, and I mean, one of the aspects of it that I do like is, like you said, man, it brought life back into this franchise. Mm -hmm. And I feel like this is going to become a priority for, um, you know, Disney. 
this is one of the properties they inherited from the 20th century fox deal i'm not 100 sure on this but people were telling me that if it did get a theatrical release then some kind of way with the previous deals it would have been um the um the restreaming rights would have had to went to somewhere like uh I believe yeah. HBO Max. I'm not 100 yeah. percent sure. Kind of like Bob, kind of like Bob's Burgers did, because you know after mm-hmm. after yeah. so many weeks, Bob's oh. Burgers, and yeah, that, that's yeah, that's uh, that, that's why they're trying to stop that from happening. Yeah. Mm, so yeah, that makes total sense. So then then it would have to go to HBO for a little while, and I got a yeah. feeling or be on both. I don't, think, I don't think this thing would have been that big of a uh, box office draw, considering you know the bad taste that the previous film left in people's mouths. Like we all would have went to see it, but I don't think it would. have been as successful as it has been from being on Hulu. It seems like everyone who has Hulu saw this or found a way to to, to, to see it, you know, where they borrowed a friend's login or, or whatever. But and the, this is the biggest film um, out this week. I know Bullet Train uh, won at the box office, um, you know, this past week, but but this is the biggest film right now. In the the, yeah. and, and for the way that they, they created the buzz, they, they, I mean, they set the tone. And this was for home viewing. Mm-hmm. Man, everyone was locked in. I know, like I said, bullet train dropped, and there, I mean, even with Carter, everything was in prey shadow this week. I mean, I mean we had a lot might, of stuff that it came might out. Be a, um, a strategy for them going forward because yeah. think about it: the the new um, Alien TV series that's going straight to Hulu. So maybe they'll just keep making these films in this vein, you know, not too crazy, you know, big budget, but expanding on the story in the universe and just putting them on there. Um, streaming platform for the time being. Maybe, maybe when it's time to do Aliens vs. Predator again, then we'll get the big. Um, we don't want Aliens vs. Predator, Predator again. I, we, I mean, Damn. maybe not that version, but but there's some good stories to be told there, dude. Like, there really you know, is. If, and they just followed the, the comic straight up. Yeah, yeah. There's some. And good stories not, I mean, I know it was kind of like it was frowned upon by the masses, but I really enjoyed the second one, man. I know. It, I'm, I'm like, I'm a rare, I'm a rare, I'm, a, I'm rare with that one. But hey, man, I did, I did. I like, I like, I liked what it what it brought to the table, man. But but there's just so much wiggle room to work with when it comes to the Predator and the Alien franchises, and you know, with Hulu doing it this way, I mean, there's really not a lot of room for failure. I mean, what's the worst that can happen? You put out a dud. Yeah, but I don't know. The only thing I do want to push back a little bit on it is I think just the dialogue of the script was bothersome to me at some times. Like, cause it's like, like, like even when they ask us, it's like, why do you want to hunt? And she's like, cause you all tell me I can't or think that I can't. And I'm like, man, they could have mixed that or made her say something like, I don't know, it's exciting to me or something like that. It's just, it was really weird. See, and I like I that. It, and I think it kind of sets up. Like the actors, they're they're solid in here, but but I think some of the dialogue just sets them up to. It gets a little awkward. Like when a man's like, "Oh, you couldn't bring it home." I'm like, "That's a little too modern." That's like something we would say. Like like you know. But it just <laughs> you know, it, yes, you're you're right to to that point. But at the same time, it also just it emphasizes the fact that really nobody believes in her. Yeah, but it doesn't kill the movie for me. But it, it just felt a little bit awkward at times. And I I did watch it twice. I watched it with the dub, which kind of. It is great to hear the language. I'll give them props for even attempting to do it, but it still has the problems of a dub. You know, there are moments where it just feels like, you know, the voice isn't matching the scenery or or it sounds like they're in a studio when when they're, when it's oh, like yeah. outside. You know, it has those problems, you know, but but I give them applaud them for trying cuz some the rumor was at first that they were going to film the dialogue scenes twice, once in English and once in Comanche. I'm like that's a lot of effort and money. Ooh, like, like most people yeah, you know, get two takes, and the one is just the the warm up take. So that means you're going to get two. That would be two. Yeah, it would be two completely different yeah. versions of the film, dude. Yeah, that's going to that's going to add production time. Is going to add up cost of making this film. So that's not going to happen. So they did do a dub. Uh, if you want to check it out like that and see the pair of Comanche language, there are a little bit differences in what they're saying in the Comanche, but what's being said in the English version. But the story comes across, you know, the same. Um, I did like the French actors though, man. I feel like that whole group was on. They was on point, dude. They, they were, like, especially that dude with the with the big beard, the main one. Yeah, yeah. the one that smoked the stogies. <laughs> yeah, it was crazy, man. So they did a good job with it. Yeah, man. but yeah, overall, this is a great film, man. Definitely, um, you know, was a highlight of last week. Yeah, I, I'm I'm with you on board 100. percent I mean, I I thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, I, you know, I see myself watching this one a few more times. Um, and if I were to, if I were to, you know, put my, my list of five 
and you know, from one to five, this one it would be Predator one, Predator two, this Predators, then the last one, which kind of almost doesn't exist to me. Yeah, I think that's the part of the for me, man. I think pretty much, man, because um, I, I definitely love this film, but. But but for what it is, man. But but I'm like you know, Corny mentioned earlier, man. I think some people are there. They're giving it a little bit, a little bit too much praise. It's good, but it's like take it down a little bit of notch. You know what I'm saying? But but it, it definitely is a great um, getting this thing back on track. Yeah, man. this is how you want to do it and get the people excited again. You know? Yeah, yeah. But um, I think that's it, folks, man. We're gonna get out of here. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, man. Turn on um, the notifications so you get um, notice when we put out new episodes and you catch me Monk, at monkey blood on twitter and instagram and uh follow us at uh from canopy on twitter and at from the canopy no no we, we missed we switched the um instagram one is ftc net at ftc net and uh this bobby blockbuster you can catch me on instagram at bobby blockbuster 118 you can also catch me on the other show that we do uh classics the cinematics brought to you only on youtube yeah. <laughs> and I'm Kaneas Bros. You can find me on Facebook, Kaneas Bros, or Instagram, Kaneas Bros, on uh, Twitter, at Kaneas1976, and on TikTok, where I'll be watching videos and stuff. Kind of like YouTube. I watch videos on YouTube and TikTok. So there you go. <laughs> All right, folks, man. We're going to catch y'all next time. Peace. Oh, yeah. <laughs>